Hey PNJ fam, it's me again and I'm here bearing some goodies for you and it's not even Christmas time yet. So if there's one request I have gotten the most, it is about ganache. Everyone is asking, do you have a ganache recipe? Do you know how to cover ganache properly? Do you have an, a tutorial? So guess what? I have one, it's out and more importantly, it's free because of how much I love my PNJ family. I learned so much from free online resources and I'm here to give it back to you. So, scuttle on, wait, my video is about to drop soon. Follow, like, comment, and if you do, you will have way more, but on Instagram, I don't need to. Take care, guys. I love you. Bye. Hey guys, so this is Chef Uju of P&J's, Patrick's and Jimmy's. I'm here to, with a short, very quick tutorial on how to make dark chocolate ganache. Now you find that dark chocolate ganache, milk chocolate ganache, white chocolate ganache have the same methodology for making them. However, the ratios of cream to um, chocolate differ. So for dark chocolate, I have adopted this recipe. It is a special P&J recipe. You would not find it anywhere else. <laughs> But um, for dark chocolate, um, this tutorial is mainly to teach you how to do it the Nigerian way or let me say for more humid climates. You can choose to adjust your ratio if you go to a colder temperature and you don't need it that firm. But for me, what has worked for me, 100%, no fail. I do not have collapsing cakes, falling cakes, breaking cakes. Oh, the cake did not stand, it melted. This ratio has worked for me. So for this ganache recipe, we're going to need a few things. Get yourself ready. You need your dark chocolate. You need your whisk, you need your spatula, a bowl, and whipping cream. So those are the only things you need for this thing. Two ingredients and just a few tools. You can make it anywhere in any home and you'll be done. So we'll go on to the next section. Okay, so now we're on to the making. For my dark chocolate ganache recipe, the standard recipe worldwide I see is two for one, 50-50. The P&J recipe, we don't call it 50-50, we say 60-40, which means 60% dark chocolate, 40% um, whipping cream. So for me, this is what I do. I get my dark, look guys, it is very important when you're doing dark chocolate, please try and use good quality chocolate i know quality chocolate is very expensive so we can say oh calibot is expensive but there are other brands that are very good that you can use but just try and make sure it's good quality because even if you get the ratio right if your quality of your chocolate is not good your 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 covering will still end up maybe too soft too melty you might not be able to work with it so i always advise use good chocolate so for this for the purpose of this tutorial i'll be using calibot dark chocolate palettes and um I'm going to be using one kg. Now, if you're doing bigger batches, you just multiply as you go along. So for each one kg of dark chocolate, I use, I get 400 grams as opposed to the standard measurement, 400 grams of whipping cream. If you're doing two kg, 800 grams, three kg, 1,200 grams, you go like that for me. So the less the whipping cream, the softer your consistency will be the harder, the firmer your consistency will be. If you want a really firm base where you can get those sharp edges on your cake, you can get your cake standing strong, even though it's staying outside in more humid temperatures, this would work perfectly for you. But if you're in a colder climate, please feel free to use the 50-50 ratio. Now, most recipes for this ganache would say, warm your whipping cream and pour it into your dark chocolate. Look, there's really no rule, guys. Everything works well. But what I've seen is a no-fail recipe no issues, no collapsing cakes, no bending cakes, is I try to warm, melt, melt my dark chocolate first. The reason why I do this is to ensure that, number one, I don't burn my whipping cream while I'm warming it. I get it just warm enough. And number two, I make sure that all those pallets are well melted before I pour the whipped cream. You can put everything in there together. It's up to you. The more comfortable you get with making ganache, you can really try anything. As long as you understand heat, 
temperature. We all know chocolate is temperamental. Dark chocolate is the easiest to work with. And for coverage, I would always advise you use dark chocolate. Milk chocolate works well too. We'll talk about the consistency for that. So I'm going to go in now to melt my chocolate. I will start with 30 second bursts. I advise 30 second bursts for people that do not, um, are not very conversant with making um, chocolate. Why? You can check how far it has melted. You don't get it burnt. We know chocolate is temperamental. If you get burnt, if you overwarm it and you get it too hot too quickly. So while my chocolate um, is melting, I'll go and talk to you about milk chocolate and white chocolate. So for milk chocolate consistency, I do um, four to one. So for every 100 kg, I do, for every 1,000, um, one kg, I do 250 grams of milk. I'm going in for another 30 seconds. So I do 250 grams of whipping cream. For every, for that, the same applies to white chocolate. One kg of, dark, of milk or white chocolate, 250 grams of whipping cream, as opposed to one kg, um, 300 grams or whatever, 250 grams. It gives you a firmer base, just the same as the dark chocolate. It also gives you a sweeter consistency. But for me, any day, any time, I stand by my dark chocolate. It can, it can withstand most weathers, most heat temperatures. No matter the situation, please don't let anyone fool you guys. Your, um, your dark chocolate... Your chocolate cake should never be under the sun, please. While it can withstand hot temperatures, please do not put it under the sun. It is not good under no circumstances. Make sure you ask people, Am I, is your event outside? Is it inside? Where is it happening? If it's an outside event, please bring it out closer, closer to where you need it. Keep it in a cool temperature or a cool climate. Yes, it will withstand the sun, but not too much sun exposure. I'm warming this. We should get fully melted chocolate within two to three minutes. So now this is um, a minute and 30 seconds. Let me check how far it has gone. As you can see, we're still a bit far away from uh, melting consistency. It's softened, but you know, we need to go a bit more. So I'm gonna put it in this time around for about one minute. Hey guys, so we're back. Um, I have melted my chocolate. I don't know how well, I hope you can see very clearly. My chocolate is fully melted. I started with 30 second burst. Now I'm more comfortable with it. After um, two minutes, no, a minute and um, 30 seconds of 30 second burst, I went in for one minute. So total time I used to get it to consistent, liquid consistency was four minutes, I would say. So I did, um, no, four minutes and 30 seconds. So just keep watching it. You melt it, you check it, you melt it, you check it, and until you have the perfect timing for your, until you have perfect timing, and perfect melting consistency. This is what I have. So now I'm gonna go in and warm my, my whipping cream. You want your whipping cream to be warmed, but not boiling, please. Get it warm that you see some smoke coming out of it. But because you've melted it as well, you just need it to be warm. You don't need it to be so hot to melt because it's not melting anything at this point. So I'm gonna to go to the microwave. I'm gonna put this for, I think I'll do it for a full two minutes or maybe, yeah. I'll do it for a full two minutes and 30 seconds. And then we'll be right back. Hey guys, so we're back. The milk is fully, well, I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out of it. This is perfect. Smoke coming out. Please do not boil it. You don't need it boiled up. And, but if by some chance you happen to boil your milk, please leave it aside to cool down. Once it's cooled down, you can take off any film you see on top of it and you point it to your ganache. So this is perfect warm temperature, hot temperature, but not boiling. And we're going to just like slowly pour it into our ganache. I'm pouring it into the ganache right now, slowly. Now, under normal circumstances, if you had not melted your callets, you would have to leave this so that it seeps in. You leave it for at least five minutes. In case you don't melt your callets, I would advise that you leave it for five minutes minimum. Let the warm cream sit in the ganache. Let it melt the callets before you start to turn it. Because if you start to turn it and you still have lumps in it, you might find it difficult to get a smooth consistency. So, but for, for us that we've already melted our ganache, we've kind of skipped that step. So we don't need to do that. All we need to do is get your whisk, your handy whisk, and you start to turn. So I'm going to tilt it a bit. And now you can see it's starting off looking like, um, but I say hot chocolate. <laughs> but you keep whisking. You've melted your your ganache already so you don't your chocolate already so you don't have to worry too much about oh it's not going to mix just keep going just keep going 
and you can see it's all coming together everything is coming together it's silky it's smooth very quickly under one minute you're good to go your ganache is completely done this would work every single time you would never ever have an issue if you follow the recipe to the letter you will never have an issue anybody can do this for you you doesn't have to be you anybody can get this done once they follow this recipe and you master it it is no fail safe it is easy but guys one thing i have to say is that this consistency that we have now is a bit too watery please do not attempt to cover your cake with this consistency you have to look for like a butter spread peanut butter consistency so for you us to do that you can either leave your ganache out it's going to take a lot longer if you're in a hurry pop it in the chiller i'm going to pop it in the chiller and then in our next section of this class we're going to go through i'm going to show you what it looks like when it's completely ready to pour out you know please you should always 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 have this consistency if you're having your ganache breaking okay so i'm going to give some key points if your ganache is not um looking smooth like what we've shown you here and your ganache looks like it's breaking please do not panic don't run around don't say oh, i've ruined it i have to throw it away no you can always save it two things you can do you get a double boiler you put this bowl or a metal bowl over a pot with some water in it and you start to turn over time you'll see that the separated ganache will start to come together the second method you can actually implement is you just pop it in a blender you pop it in a blender and you blend and it will force it to come together if you have an emulsion blender you can use that if you have a standard regular blender use that please don't use any blender for pepper or use a blender you only use for baking baking purposes so yes um this is what we have so i'm going to go pop this in the chiller and i'll be right back to show you the perfect consistency for covering your cakes hey guys so we're back and um finally we have the ganache this is the perfect consistency like i said spreadable butter consistency is not drooping it's just nice i don't like it too thick so that i can spread and cover quickly and i don't like it too thin either so we're going to make sure that everything is ready i have my fro my cake my cake has been chilled please it's always good to use chilled cakes so that you're able to your ganache is able to harden very quickly and as much as possible you have to move fast like i said so that you do not um so the next section of this we're going to be ganaching this cake we'll be right back <laughs> 